www.yannisartexhibit.bitipois.com www.yannisartexhibit.bitipois.com Uh, eyes and jaws, and this is where I, I started noticing that correlation between the eye and the jaws. There was the focus on the eyes and the jaws. And you see that also, again, different forms of eyes and jaws, but it's eyes and mouth, eyes and jaws. Um, see, eye and mouth, again, he's focusing on two eyes and a mouth or a jaw in all of these. And then they they begin to convert into imprisoned eyes and imprisoned faces. Um, that one must have been one of his later works because you can tell that the, 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 the idea was more developed. Look at, you know, nails and they're red and you have orange now, you know, a lot of black and red, no yellow in this one, but you have orange, which is a combination of yellow and red. So it could be the, the blood merging with the light and nails upon nails upon nails upon nails. And as we get later, he uses more and more nails and more, they're bent. Some of them are bent, some are straight. It's no longer just one or two and, you know, glass poking inward, but the, the, the theme is repeated over and over with, with this inward injuries, imprisonment. Um, here there's just one, there's the face. You can still see the face, but there's one missing, the, the extra eye, which is almost always in all his other, in his other works, there are two eyes here. For some reason, there's one. Now, again, some of these might have been when he was just beginning to experiment with certain ideas. You know, but a mouth that's imprisoned. And then on top of the mouth being imprisoned, there's more imprisonment. And could he have maybe been implying that this was a sort of a coffin? You know, a crypt you know, and then some definitely more developed than others. Here's one maybe earlier. This one I believe we looked at earlier. Uh, so I'd really love to, to get, sorry about the noise. I'll probably have to edit that out. Uh, here's a very, very well-developed one with all the nails and the coffin. I think we went over this one here. And then it's a dawning on me that, you know, each element, each main element is a person in his life, as well as a self-portrait of himself. Yanni had a beard, he had a very full beard and mustache and was, you know, hairy, kind of hairy. He had a lot of hair on his head and and of course, we don't know at what time, I think this was probably done in the 90s. Um, so he certainly had a lot more hair then. So on the one hand, you see him, you see his face. And then the elements of the face are pieces of his life or people in his life. What successful artists do and what I think Yanni was able to achieve uh, you know, they they set up a body of work. So sometimes you can't really appreciate an artist until you see the entire body of work. Because I'd seen Yanni's art prior to to this uh, on a piece by piece base, basis. You know, I'd never seen the whole body of work, and the body of his work is extremely impactful because you see the progression from from when he was young, when he first started out painting, and and in, in his interest in art, and as he developed his his passion and his his goal, and so in my notes, what I was noticing is 
I think the basis of his entire trajectory was his, it was his journey. His journey was to confront, his journey in confronting death or confronting his fear of death and all the different relationships he personally had with death, whether it be someone he loved who passed away, his his own fear of death. Uh, at, at one point, he even seems to be taunting death. There's an imperative sentence there, which it's almost like he's joking at this point with death. So as you see his fear of death early in his career, as he got older, it's almost like he's developed a a relationship with death and it and not that and it and it's not a scary relationship anymore it's a more you know g- growing into sort of an acceptance but sort of a a challenge to death and then so he came up with this imperative but i believe that he was probably at some point just sitting there pondering about how he could beat death or cheat death there are different things you can do to death. And I think he was probably thinking, you know, beat death, cheat death, greet death. You know, you can greet death. You can meet death. You know, he was probably playing in his head with different things. And at some point he landed on the word eat death because all of the others are kind of things that we've heard before. You Oh, he beat death when he was able to escape the, you know, the train, the oncoming train or, you know, and you, you even do see in one of his self-projective identification um, works where he talks about that. And, and his goal was to beat death, you know, and not, you know, physically, obviously, but his goal. His, he was trying to find a way to beat death. Uh, his conscious, his conscious self was going to beat death. Um, I, I don't know how devout he was or not. I don't know if he believed in God. I feel he was an agnostic. Again, that's my own invention. I knew Yanni, but not on a deep, 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 profound level. I, but I did know some things about him. So. I don't recall ever speaking about him about God, but I get I get the feeling that he was an agnostic for some reason. Um, uh, I'd have to confirm that with his family. But in any case, where was I going to go? Okay, here we were talking in one of his self-projective identifications. He has different. He shows about the different ways to that one can uh, pass on either by choice, by extinction, by, um, different ways of going extinct. I apologize. And we've got to find that. I'm see here. He, he, you know, is very more, um, here he talks about death, but in a, in a, a more direct sense, afraid of dying. I'm afraid of dying. I'm afraid of dying. So, um, is repeated over, reiterated, reiterated, reiterated. Again, the reiterations are in all of his eras, in all of the periods where he's worked. But there's one in particular I recall where he's talking about um, the different ways, the different relationships with death in a way. Um, I just wish I could find it. Well, if I don't find it now, I'll, I'll find it later and I'll put it in, I'll put it in the screenshot. Okay, here's one that's pretty morbid sounding, Um, but it's saying either either I kill my body or I go on existing until my extinction. So you either kill your body, but he talked about, he knew the body would die. uh, He wasn't denying that, but he... He didn't believe that his consciousness would die. He, he felt he could, he could beat that um, extinction from this earth, you know, longing, self, self-deception, self, you know, you have to make your own sense out of it because these, a lot of them, a lot of these self-projective identification pieces talk about death. Um, here, it, you know, a square, an oval, a circle, 
death of a painter. Uh, I I named it that, but I, the reason I gave it that name is because it's something in there that says those words. The painter died, you know, before completing. Now, Yanni made this long, long before he died, he made this painting. Unless, you know, but there's the oval shape and there's a square. And, you know, see, the square, it kind of looks like a bloody crypt. Again, when something is square, it, it's symbolizing, it, it's often black and red in the middle, red. And, and it makes me think of death. And then here you have the green again. See the, the little bit of green. There's a lot of black, white, yellow, red, and a touch of green there. Um, if we go on, you know, and, and again, this, these are all a mishmash of different periods. Here's the black, the black, red, white, and yellow again, but in a, a more scattered abstract way. And it just says, I am. And you can't see what it says as much as when you go backwards. Um, and then we have the restricted exhibit that I'm working on now. That one has, and I haven't finished uploading everything, but they continue the progression from the elements we see here. You know, here, this this looks like a portrait, looks like a self-portrait of Yanni to me with with the eye, you know, that one eye appears to be working, it's yellow, then the other eye could be his, his non-functional eye, uh, but there's the red. Okay, here we have kind of a peachy color, which reminds me of, of his Caucasian skin. Um... All right, and then the the cutouts. Okay, the protruding eye. What have we missed? Void is a medium. Nails or nail-like forms. See, when you go through, you'll see. Here, look at this. This is what makes me feel he did several several referencing religion or religious uh, um, images. This one, to me, I mean, it it doesn't take a stretch of the imagination. It it looks like a a coffin, some kind of coffin, and you, you are, you're in the mirror. So whoever is looking at this artwork sees themselves in the mirror and they are the artwork. They become a piece of the artwork with the nails. Now these nails are yellow and notice the nails are no longer with the sharp edge pointing in. It's with the it's with the flat edge pointing in on this one. So could they be the eyes looking inward rather than the eyes injuring inward or uh, the nails injuring inward? Yeah, these all have the flat ends inward where in other pieces you'll see the sharp edge inward. And I'm, I'm feeling that they are eyes because of what I mentioned earlier. And then the other one that's more interesting, same one here, we all become extinct. This is more it, bringing us more in into it. We all are going to go through this. Uh, silent extinction. It, again, I named it that. I don't know if that's the real name. And once we see the backs of the artwork, we'll know. Uh, at the, ex the things you look at here, please send us questions to the email or on the form, please RSVP to come to the exhibit in May. Um, but here the, the, the viewer can interact with the artwork. We, we become the artwork, we're in the picture. And the nails, again, the nails are with the flat end in, but then we also have some nails with the sharp edge in. So we have both here. But for me, when the flat edge is outward, it's it's supposed to be an eye. And when the sharp edge is sticking in, it's, you know, it has more to do with injury and... Um, and then I'd, I'd love to go into more detail on the, on the restricted exhibit, but I'm not going to show that here. You'll have to either sign up for the website to see those, 
but there's a definite progression in his body of work and it's and it's all cohesive so if you you see one you just travel along his life and you see the cohesive journey he took towards his i feel he achieved his eventual acceptance of death and i feel he achieved what he appeared to be striving for that that his consciousness remain because the messages that came to me through the artwork are not things that I would have come up with myself ever, ever. I'm anyone who knows me knows that I'm not one of those impassioned artistic, you know, I, I might have a hyper personality or whatever, but I, I don't think up these kind of explanations for art. I'm not a, I'm not an art person. So for me to, to react so strongly to this, there's something there. And I honestly feel that Yanni was somehow sending me these messages as I was going through his artwork and telling me, telling me things, you know. So while at the one, on the one hand, one, of course, will develop their own perceptions and their own beliefs of what, what Yanni's message was, uh, some of those things I, I certainly could not have come up with myself. So here we have an imprisoned cross. I mean, that ob has very more obvious. And that's the thing. There are also levels because you have the obvious. Yanni's struggle with his faith, perhaps. I mean, it's a very surface level explanation. But there's always another level. There's always something else that you discover if you keep looking at it, at the particularly the more developed pieces. Here we have white nails. That wasn't just an accident. Those nails are white for a reason. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.